Do you have the tendency to do things the hard way as you are working away in Adobe Illustrator for no reason in particular? Why struggle when you don't need to? Here's some time-saving tricks for your graphic design and illustration needs. Let's start with text. Before we continue, let me tell you about Skillshare, which is a platform that has hundreds of classes about animation, drawing, illustration, and several other creative fields. We've got you guys this course from Skillshare about Adobe Illustrator. The course is a guide for beginners who want to start using Adobe Illustrator. It is taught by Daniel Scott, who is an Adobe certified trainer. The course covers a variety of topics such as basic techniques including icons, logos, lines, brushes, and many more. The Skillshare platform offers a wide variety of additional related courses and the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will receive a free month of premium membership. All right, now back to the video. Number one, setting boundaries. One of the most important aspects of graphic design is alignment. Nothing is more stressful than elements of a piece being slightly crooked. It's not always a bad thing as asymmetry and working with diagonals can be appealing, but in this case, we are referring to unintentional crookedness, which only serves to make your work appear sloppy, lazy, and unprofessional. Knowing that, it can be rather difficult to resize and align letters in particular, as there is a lot of nuance that go into typography. Specifically aligning lowercase letters with other shapes without turning the text itself into a shape because of the manner in which the EM box or bounding box works. So what you can do is change the measuring metrics by going to window type character and in the hamburger menu select show character font height options and from there you can select x height in the case of working with a lowercase or c height in the case of working with capital letters no more turning your letters into shapes for precise size manipulation and no more futzing either imagine having to eyeball it all oh, the pain number two strong and independent like me Hey, what do you mean I'm a liar? That hurt my feelings. Uh, here's something even more useful. You can, with precision, move letters individually by pressing Shift plus D. Uh, so again, you can have a lot more freedom with spacing your letters and having more fun design-wise without restricting yourself to turning your letters into shapes, along with having the freedom of editing fonts and punching through your keyboard directly. I promise we're done with text. So what's next? Number three, global colors. If you've got a pre-existing artwork and you have to conduct precise modifications to any colors, well, you can just select the shape in person. But it can be tedious if the colors are repeated throughout the entire artwork and if it's included in strokes or gradients. You can manually alter every asset, but why do that yourself? In your swatches window, you can create a new group of swatches that will sample all of the colors from your pre-existing artwork. Just make sure you check the convert process to global box. And now all you need to do is double click on any color and alter it in the swatch window that is for it to change that color globally. And again, it updates gradients, strokes, gradients that are strokes or any other messy blend of colors that you don't want to nor need to mess around with, honestly. Uh, colors are after all notoriously scary. So why fight a war when you can just cooperate in peace? Number four, a guide for your colors. Finding color palettes can be a real pain in the brain, and unless you are willing to become a color theory expert, making your own palettes isn't always the smoothest of processes. Even more complexities rise up when you already have a pre-existing color that you need to build around. Thankfully, Illustrator is equipped with a tool that allows you to generate matching colors with a few simple clicks called Color Guide, accessed under Window. The options it provides are realistically limitless, and with options like global color swatches, creating variants and doing revisions was never easier. Number 5. Puppet Warp For all of y'all that are 2D animation enthusiasts, shoutouts, you're not unseen, there is actually a Puppet Warp option in Adobe Illustrator. What can it be useful for? I, I don't know, that's up to you to determine. But you can, for all intents and purposes, somewhat pseudo rig your 2D artworks. You can add custom warp points to more efficiently edit your artwork, or in case you are feeling rather feisty. There are manners that are very convoluted, mind you, to kind of animate in Illustrator. So that can be an option as well. Uh, moral of the story, puppet warp is an option that exists. Now it's on you to be creative. Number 6. 
The corners. They're alive. They're, they're alive corners. Everyone probably knows about life corners, as they are a cornerstone of Illustrator. <laughs> Rounded corners are one of the reasons it was invented in the first place. That being said, did you know that if you double click on your life corner, you will get a dialog box that shows you the different types of corners you can have. You can make them concave instead of convex and control the radius to an exact amount. Pretty neat, huh? Another cool thing is if you press V on your keyboard before right clicking, you will get a separate window that controls your shape as a whole. What's with programs and all this hidden tech? You can't even learn about it unless you sift through 700 pages worth of content. Or check out our channel for easier compilations and guides to the best tutorials out there. Wink wink. Number 7. Gradient Palooza. Okay, listen. I would like to preface this by saying that I'm a mature adult. Okay, gradients are the best. And here is some cool things you can make them do in Illustrator. Much like text, you can make them follow a path or a stroke. It can be as detailed or as simple as you would like it to be. Freeform gradients allow you to adjust the starting point of any given color. You can make it follow a line or just put spot gradients anywhere on your shape. You can have as many spots or lines as you'd like. Now the fun really happens when you combine all of these options in a single design. I'll let you imagine what you can do as the sky is the limit as I keep repeating, especially when it comes to creativity, since this one is more fun than practical, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave you on that. Okay, fine, some practical uses I can think of is simulating reflections in metals, or shading spheres, messing around with tie-dye-like effects, among other things that I'm sure you can figure out. Oh my god, I'm a child. Number 8. Customization Galore and last but definitely not least, in the path menu, under object, you can add any number of anchor points to any given shape. It's interesting because it doesn't only open up the door to some incredible customization, but it is also best used in combination with other tools that rely on anchor points, like pucker and bloat, or to simply transform whatever shape you want to your exact liking. The advantage of working on a vector program. You know, you know how that is. And this is all we have got for you today. We hope you learned something from this. And if you want to learn more, worry not, since as we said, you needn't go further than our own channel, where we have quite a few documentaries, comparisons, reviews, compilations, and lists, and general advice for digital programs, including Illustrator. And we also cover content for both art and animation. Don't forget to like and subscribe to not miss out on any future upload. And don't hesitate to share your wisdom in the comment section below. Along with telling us what you want to see next. And with that, thank you for watching, and we'll catch you soon with some more content. Do take care. Bye!